Welcome to the Next Level Human Podcast. As a human, you have a job to do. In fact, you have four jobs. To earn and manage money, to attain and maintain health and fitness, to build and sustain personal relationships, to find meaning and make a difference. None of these jobs are taught in school. And that is what this podcast is designed to do. To educate us all on living our most fulfilled lives through the mastery of these four jobs. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Tita, and I believe we are here living this life for three reasons and three reasons only. To learn, to teach, and to love. In this podcast, I will be learning, teaching, and loving right along with you. I'm grateful to have your company. Here's to our next level. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's show. So today I have a guest, Tracy Callahan, someone I just met. This is the first time her and I are speaking. And part of the reason we're doing this is because Tracy messaged me through DM on Instagram and asked me a question that I get uh, far too often. And it's oftentimes very difficult to answer a question like this through DM, even through uh, text-based or anything like that. It really has to be sort of a conversation. So one of the things I said is I said, hey, what do you think about us getting on and doing a podcast? And then you can just sort of ask me all your questions and we'll have the time to discuss it. And then all of you um, who are interested in this topic can actually listen to it. And then in the future, when I get this question, I can send the conversation between Tracy and uh, myself. And so um, the, the question that Tracy asked, and of course, we may go in uh, several different uh, directions here, but Tracy is an athlete and at a pretty high level, right? So you used to play what, volleyball or what, what was it? Yeah, your sport? I, I played beach volleyball uh, professionally for the last 10 years. Um, mm. I was on the USA national beach team. So I traveled internationally um, to pretty much all continents um, mm. minus one. But um, yeah, so that's been my life competing and training and doing that nonstop for the last decade. So now I'm in the, I'm finished with that. So it's kind of figuring out what do I want to do after sports, which is a very scary question for a lot of athletes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, and, you know, and just so anyone who doesn't know this playing professional sports is, you know, uh, it's funny because I played high school ball and could have played college ball. I was on the team for a little bit and it was a jump from to go from High school to college was huge. And I hear the jump from college to the professional ranks is even a bigger deal. And I've worked with athletes my whole life. And so trust me when I tell all of you playing at a professional level in a professional sport is just like the baddest ass thing. So first of all, uh, we can say that, you know, Tracy is definitely a badass and obviously you need a certain drive and a certain sort of focus to do that kind of work. But now she's looking at going in a different direction and going into medicine. And so uh, why don't I let you formulate the question, you know, just ask me like you asked it or however you want to phrase it now. And then we'll just get into this discussion and we'll go any direction you want with it, Tracy, because I know there's a lot underneath all of this and uh, we'll just make it super informal and just have a conversation and see where we go. So I'll let you kind of go, awesome. go ahead and start with the Great. question. Yeah. So before I ask you a question, I just kind of this is not something I, you know, for anybody that's listening to this, too, that might be in the same position that I'm in whether they're younger than me or older than me, um, it's that there's people are becoming more aware that the traditional medical system has its flaws, right? Yeah. So, um, okay, what are the alternatives? Well, a great alternative is naturopathic medicine, right? Mm -hmm. You've got, you've, you are a doctor in naturopath, uh, naturopathic medicine. Um, you're an ND. And, um, you know, so what I've, I've kind of been trying to do my due diligence of as of reaching out to medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, physicians assistants, dietetics, people that are in the field right now who are who have gone through it, who are practicing or not practicing, and sort of hearing uh, the pros and cons of um, of their profession. And so I found with I've talked to a couple naturopathic doctors. Some one who just, you know, has a small practice in Irvine, California, and one who has a very large, successful practice in Utah. And um, what I noticed about you is that you are doing so much more than just sitting in an office, 
you know, um, and taking in clients and patients. And you, it doesn't, from where I can tell, you don't have a private practice. I don't know if you did at one point in time. Um, but, you know, like I said before, it's like somebody who's a student who's interested in actual, in healthcare, in, mm-hmm. in helping to bring healing to other people. Um, you know, I guess my question would be, um, how has your naturopathic background shaped where you are today and um, and what you're doing today and, and your ability to uh, be of service to the world yeah okay so it's a this is a really um kind of cool question for me to kind of go backwards and let me see where to start well first of all i'll give you a little bit of my background tracy um uh, to and and a lot of people who listen to this podcast uh, may or may not know this but i started out as a personal trainer i started at 15 years old so um, and, and what I mean by that is literally I was making money off personal training at 15 years old, writing programs for my football player friends and their family members. And so like you, I was very much into sport and performance, uh, started out with the workout thing. So personal training and I p- paid my way through undergrad personal training. I paid my way through medical school, personal training and bartending, believe it or not. So this interest <laughs> of psychology and physiology, but I always knew like you. Um, it sounds like we're similar that, you know, you are a wellness oriented person. You understand about physical fitness and I'm sure playing at the level that you did, you also understand about nutrition. So that was my sort of also way of entering into this. But once I started getting into sport, I started getting into nutrition for sport that led me to study biochemistry in undergrad. And then this is where uh, the conversation starts for you as well. The conversation for me was Um, I want to go to medical school. My grandfather was a traditional medical doctor, an MD. And one of the things I just assumed at the time, uh, naively, is that I would get education in lifestyle medicine. I would get an education in nutrition. I would get an education in exercise. And I would get an education in my other interests since the time I was young, psychology and physical art and self-development. And come to find out when I looked at the curriculum for medical schools at that time, There was not one course in nutrition, not one course in exercise and nothing in self-development psychology. So from my perspective, um, I have no um, nothing against drugs and surgery. But for me, I wanted to do lifestyle medicine. And so like you, it sounds like and I'll kind of give you the pros and cons because I can go backwards now and see that I probably could have done exactly what I'm doing now if I got my MD. So I want to just tell you this story. And then let you know uh, in terms of how you want to practice what I might advise or what I would tell Jade, younger Jade, what to do. Right. So um, I then was sort of in a conundrum and was confused and uh, about as close to depressed as I've ever been in my life. Because I was like, now, what do I do now? Similar to you, I was like, well, maybe I'll go get a master's in nutrition. Maybe I'll go and get a master's in uh, sports science. Maybe I'll go the chiropractic route. I didn't know that naturopathic medicine was a thing. My brother, who was finishing up his master's degree, my brother Keone Tita, um, found this school called Bastyr University, which at the time was in Seattle, Washington. Now there's another clinic in Southern California. And when I saw the curriculum, I was like, "Okay, ton of nutrition, not really any exercise um, and a lot of opportunities for delving into psychology and even a counseling track in clinic, which I did follow that track. So for me, um, I was a very holistic and integrative thinker even then. Right. So I was just like, I want to do lifestyle medicine um, and I don't want to just do drugs and surgery, although I, I would like to have that available to me. So this right. appealed to me because the curriculum said, yes, you can prescribe Drugs. So I have my license right now is in Washington State and and in California. So we can't do narcotics. We can't do mood medications, um, but pretty much everything else uh, we can uh, prescribe, especially hormones, antibiotics, things like that. Um, so it it really does help you from that perspective. You are acting as a, a primary care physician if you want to. Um, however, the scope is a little bit limited in terms of the uh, the therapeutics you can deliver, the drugs that you can deliver. From my perspective, um, once I got my naturopathic background, I'll tell you the, the strengths, first of all. 
coming from a biochem degree and very science oriented individual, uh, someone who was reading research papers towards the end of my undergrad, not something that most people do or like to do. I was very science based and I was worried about the naturopathic curriculum. So here's uh, ultimately how it panned out for me, my education. Then we'll go through the hindsight and be like, well, what may I advise you to do based on what you're looking for? But from my perspective, the the um, basic sciences were excellent, excellent. Um, and I made friends with some people at UW who were in the medical program there. And I would say we were 100 percent on a par at Bastion University with the basic sciences. Um, they were hard. We had a lot of people drop out of that program that first year um, because the curriculum was not easy. And the basic sciences are essentially you are you know, doing medical school education. This is, uh, uh, you know, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, uh, neurology, all of it. Right. So you're getting a very strong base in the basic sciences. There is no doubt that you will come out of that program the first two years with a fantastic uh, education in the basic sciences, as far as I'm concerned. Then where it starts to split off is where the doctors go through drugs and surgery. We go through more herbal medicine, some things which I consider a little bit out there. I was interested in the philosophy behind it. Homeopathy was one, something that I, I don't do now, but I was interested in the philosophy of it. And I'm one of these people who's a very open minded person. So I'm just like, I don't care what the research says as long as it works. But I also care what the research says. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, exactly so, I yeah, right. So I'm always going back and forth. I'm like, I'm going to use research, but I also if something works, I'll use it. So from my perspective, that's when things started to diverge and the education in my mind. Now, of course, uh, just as everyone's listening to this, realize that I'm one person. But I'll tell you, in my mind, the basic scientists suited me. Once we got into clinic, um, I started to see that we kind of had half and half type of thing. Um, we had a lot of things that I did not consider evidence based and that I did not really consider that useful in the clinic that were sort of pushed. And there was a heavy natural medicine bias, uh, which makes sense. Right. And even if I had a bias now, it would be a natural medicine bias. And what I mean by that. And the reason I'm going through all this, Tracy, because I think you're going to you'll find you're going to say, oh, I remember that conversation I had with Jade. And some of these things are going to impact you um, later. The natural medicine bias, what I mean by that is that drugs and surgery were seen almost even though we are getting trained in some of that stuff, were seen as um, not just a last resort, but more like never use it. Right. Mm -hmm. It was it was sort of severely downplayed. Um, which was, in my mind, not a huge deal because I didn't really want to do, you know, a lot of drugs and surgery. But I did see that if I really wanted to do that um, and get that training, all of a sudden, this did not seem like the place to be for me. Right. They just right. were not really you didn't really get that in clinic. For example, I didn't stitch anybody up in clinic. Not one time. Wow. I did do a lot of gyne exams and a lot of, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, prostate exams and things like that. Um, but I didn't do surgery. Uh, I didn't do, uh, you know, stitches. I didn't do, um, didn't prescribe any uh, really drugs at the time other than some antibiotics. We didn't do any hormone stuff at the time. Um, and so I started to see that that was pretty limited. Almost everything was supplements and herbs and some homeopathics. Now, I split off uh, in, in traditional medical school when you're doing in clinic. They start going into internships and residencies. The best way to think about what we did at Bastyr, and I don't know how it's changed now, is we did uh, basically an in-clinic sort of internship or residency while you're in the clinic. And you have certain paths that you follow. And you kind of have to make these paths up in a sense because no one really tells you, oh, here's your tracks to go on. So I focused all my attention on counseling because I really wanted that and all and the, and the rest of my stuff in physical medicine. So I did all the clinic rounds that I had to do. And then I did all my elective rounds in uh, counseling, specifically couples counseling, which was really cool because I still love that stuff and still do a lot of that stuff and physical medicine, which was uh, manipulation, uh, muscle energy, stretching. Um, a little mix of chiropractic and physical therapy and um, contrast hydrotherapy, which is really big now. It's really interesting to see right. that after I got training in that a long time ago. Cold plunges, um, hot peat baths, um, sauna therapies, all of that kind of stuff was sort of the physical medicine department. We weren't there wasn't a whole lot yet with 
um, pulsed electromagnetic fields, which is still iffy in the research or red light therapy and stuff like that. We didn't do any of that, but that would be those tracks. Sorry to break into the show, but I wanted to take a second to cover one of our sponsors and tell you all about Paleo Valley at paleovalley.com. These are the grass-fed sticks that I tell you all so much about that all of my friends know I have on hand constantly. They are in my car. They are at my house. I keep them at my sister's home and my parents' house. I have these things everywhere because they are the simplest, most convenient whole foods protein supplement you can get. Almost like carrying around pure protein, low carb protein in your pocket. They also, these Paleo Valley beef sticks are the only, the only 100% grass fed and grass finished beef sticks on the market. They use organic spices. They are naturally fermented Instead of using nitrates and nitrites that can be a problem in some of these cured meats, and they simply taste fantastic. Check out the original or the jalapeno. Those are my favorites. Please make sure you go over to paleovalley.com and visit. When checking out, use the code next level for a 15% discount. Remember, Our sponsors keep the show going by you giving them your patronage and spending your money on these high quality products. You actually do a few things. One, you're helping to support the podcast. And two, you are helping your health. And three, you are making sure that good quality companies like Paleo Valley can be out there doing their business changing the world, making the earth better. One of the things you may not know about this is that grass-fed organic and grass-finished beef is doing something that is so utterly important for our environment, actually helping to repopulate the topsoil. A lot of people don't know this, but our topsoil is being extremely depleted. And raising animals, especially cattle, the correct way helps to get that topsoil back. This is one of the reasons why I love Paleo Valley, not to mention it tastes fantastic, but they're one of these companies like my other sponsors, Cured Nutrition and Organifi, that are doing the right things by the environment. I really appreciate everything they do, and I hope you will check them out. Thanks so much. PaleoValley.com. Use the code next level. And now back to the show. Um, So that sort of was my education and my friends who went to medical school got a very, got almost no, got none of that nutrition stuff. We did a lot of nutrition too, by the way, in clinic. So it was a lot of like, here's what to eat. Here's supplements. Here's herbs. Rarely here's drugs. Almost rarely yeah. here's some hormone therapies. So from that perspective, you're kind of acting in my mind in clinic. It was mainly like a, uh, a nutritionist at, you know, um, doctor slash nutritionist. You did physical exams you did diagnoses, you did all that stuff, but then your tools were nutrition, supplements, herbs, primarily, rarely ever drugs, even though you got some of that training. So from my perspective, even though we got some of the training in lecture, we didn't really get much of that training in clinic. And so I'm going to stop there just to see if you have any questions about the curriculum, because then we can go into how I see the way of thinking about each of these as we move forward. But I will say sort of uh, just one more thing. So everyone's clear and you're clear from from my perspective. And again, it's just one person, but I've thought an awful lot about this education um, there. It was kind of a misnomer from my perspective when they said, you know, you're going to be um, a primary care physician from my perspective, um, because I feel like um, diagnoses wise, our skills were subpar. The training was subpar in my mind compared to an MD. However, I do think the modalities we were using, lifestyle medicine, for most people who come see a primary care physician were exactly what they should have been getting. Um, I just did not feel like I had the tools um, at that time to really do a lot with, uh, you know, drugs other than antibiotics. I didn't really feel like I got the education around hormone replacement therapy and stuff like that. A lot of that came later for me. So that will give you sort of the understanding of where I think the strengths were and where the uh, the um, the weaknesses of the program uh, were. So I'll stop there and see if you have any questions first, just about the different curriculum. And I know it's probably a little different now because keep in mind, you know, I graduated from Bastyr in 2004. So that's a while ago. 
And so maybe it's it's different now. But uh, any questions about that in terms of? No, I mean, I think that was pretty clear, um, Mm -hmm. especially when you talked about this third and fourth year uh, for students, Mm -hmm. because, you know, if anybody does go to uh, admissions meeting for one of these naturopathic schools, they're going to hear, hey, it's the exact same curriculum that you would get at medical school, you know, Mm -hmm. but differentiating those last two years, I think that's really important um, topic to bring up. And also, I would say the positive option of you sort of got to create um, the specialty that you wanted to follow yep. uh, is great, especially for people who do have more of like a pioneering spirit um, mm-hmm. and are more willing to probably have it be sort of an entrepreneur, um, which it seems like naturopathics really are that. Um, yep. So, uh, yeah, I think that was pretty concise and clear. Okay. Yeah. And you caught on really quickly to where I'm going with this next. Uh, if you have a pioneering spirit, it's wonderful because I do think the MDs got locked into, you know, sort of like they had to do this thing. And I remember my friends being like, oh, my God, I would love to do that. That's so cool. We don't have any options for that or I just don't have time. The other thing that I did a lot at Bastyr that was amazing was I took there was a lot of opportunities, people coming from outside. For example, I remember um Carolyn Mace was really popular back in my day. I don't know if you know who that is. She yeah, I've, I've got a couple tool. of her books. Yeah. Yeah. So she came and I was very much into that work. I've always been into self-development. So she did several courses at that school. Um, it was one of the first places that I got. Uh, who's the guy that wrote? Um, hmm, what's that book? The Biology of Belief. Uh uh, anyway, there were there were Lipton? other there were other people who came in. Uh, Bruce Lipton, uh, yeah. Bruce Lipton is who I'm talking about. So there were people that came in that I got to study with and ha- got to do a lot. So I would say exactly that. I was very aware very early on that I was like, okay, I'm going to focus in these two areas, and um, I see the weaknesses, and I'm going to use this to my advantage. So now the next. Uh, phase of this is to talk about, I think that one of the major things that you and I briefly got into in DM, which was, okay, well, nowadays, many medical doctors, and by the way, I actually do a lot of this in my work. I train uh, MDs and NDs and nutritionists and DCs in metabolism. And in, uh, I, I'm a continuing education provider for physicians, medical doctors, naturopaths, and stuff like that. And there are many MDs now who practice exactly like naturopathic doctors with a full scope, right? So in other words, they got full scope, full training, and they afterwards they go, okay, I'm going to go to the Institute for Functional Medicine. I'm going to get a certification in functional medicine. I'm going to uh, educate myself in functional nutrition. I'm going to educate myself in herbs and supplements and all these kinds of things. And if you know ahead of time, then you can begin focusing on that. It's just that the MD curriculum is they pretty much got you locked in. And especially when you do residencies and stuff like that, you're jumping through a lot of hoops for two years and you don't get to do much. And so a lot of people sort of get burnt out in that process. But you certainly can. And and some of the best functional physicians and integrated physicians I know are MDs, not NDs. And they came at it from MD first, medical doctor first, into the functional medicine realm. And I would even say naturopathic doctors, um, the best ones in my mind, are the ones who also learned more of the functional medicine. Now, you do get a lot of that in naturopathic school, but it's not as much as I think that most people think. You're, you you know, a lot of those therapeutics, though, by the way, so a lot of things we learn in in the naturopathic uh, sort of uh, education are all the things that are now in vogue. So right. you're very well steeped in things like, you know, gut restoration, the microbiome, uh, you know, how um, autoimmune, uh, autoimmunity and the neuroendocrine immune uh, system. And you'll have a very system oriented integrative approach that you may not have as strong of an approach if you go to the MD route. But you can pick up a lot of that through reading. And so um, from that perspective, my answer to that question would be like, honestly, um, the MD route gives you a little bit more, I think, um, in the drug realm. It gives you a little bit more tools to use if you're planning on being in a clinic. You also get a little bit more options with insurance and all that kind of stuff. And, and you also probably, if as the, um, as the environment changes around medicine, you're going to have more of an option to 
uh, been with that environment. You also may find yourself, though, like many of my friends, having to jump through so many hoops that you get burnt out and you're not doing what you want to do until six years later. Um, now, with the naturopathic stuff, um, just to let you know, from my perspective, most of what I learned and this is what trips people out. Most of what I learned did not come in my mind from the naturopathic program, to be honest with you. It came from um, me coming out of school and very much like using your words, having a pioneering spirit and going pretty quickly like, you know what? I don't know that I want to sit in front of people one on one. I think there's a principle in our medicine called docere, which means doctor as teacher. And I really vibed with that. And I was like, and I didn't know it at the time, but I was like, oh, you know, you're far better as a teacher. You understand this stuff really well. You seem to be able to communicate better than your peers. Then I'm going to start teaching this stuff to the lay public first. But as I develop my expertise, and, and by the way, I'll go through that really quickly. My expertise came from reading research and running into people. So at, for an example, I got into clinic, a consulting clinic. So when I left uh, Seattle, I had a job offer at the time. I'll never forget this. They offered me $80,000 to work in a gym and be the doctor there. Hmm. And, I, and at the time that was really good money, right? right. And I was just like, okay, student loans, debt. <laughs> and I thought about it. Then I called my mother and father up and I was like, hey, um, I'm coming back to North Carolina to live with you guys for a little while to start a business. And they were like, my parents are amazing. So they're like, great. So I lived there for two years. I opened up a consulting clinic next to Wake Forest University, consulting with a lot of the doctors there with my brother. And so I was seeing patients, but they signed a waiver that said, I'm not their physician. Any, any information that I give them needs to be checked with their physician. They needed to have a physician to even see me. And I did the work exactly like how I would do naturopathic medicine without the legality stuff. And then I opened right. up a gym, a boot camp on the side, and then I started writing a book on metabolism. Hmm. That then launched me into the internet space, which I didn't know was coming. This book did really well at the time, back in 2010, and launched me into the teaching realm. And at that point in time, I became sort of a business person, educator, author. And so and I kind of did that on purpose. So in your mind and anyone thinking about this, if they, if they go, well, I want to do Jade's career. My career was sort of very planned out, just like you are planning it right now. I really was a lot like you. I was like thinking, what's this going to be? Not knowing exactly what it was going to look like, but knowing in general that eventually I wanted to do fitness, nutrition and, you know, sort of education around fat loss, weight loss. This is the area that I wanted uh, to work in. That then turned into working with mostly women, needing to figure out female metabolism at a time where no one was talking about it, diving into actual research studies. No one taught me any of this stuff. Really, you didn't get any of what I teach in medical school. Some people tell me you still really don't. So I basically ended up becoming what I would say an endocrinology specialist in female hormones. Then I started doing hormone replacement therapies, and things like that, luckily along with a doctor. So I would write out the scripts for people. They would take it to their doctors and the doctors would be like, cool. And I, that's how I practiced. But it was very much um, in a way that I made my own path, if that makes sense. Right. Now, yeah. I do know MDs uh, who came the other way, who also did what I did and um, made their own path and came to functional and integrative medicine. And when you talk to these people, they often go, I wish I had a naturopathic background. I don't think I've ever said that I wish I had a medical person's background, to right. be honest with you. But I do have had them say a lot that it's hard to undo uh, the training that they got. But now there's so many opportunities for you through, um, you know, functional, uh, the Institute for Functional Medicine and other places like that, even through sort of my certifications, my certifications, lots of MDs take them. And to learn about female metabolism and weight loss. And they really don't understand this stuff. And a lot of nat naturopathic doctors don't either. Right. So what's really interesting about you stepping into this realm, you know, I still think there's not a lot of people who, if you're looking at doing exactly what I'm doing, it's not a lot of people doing it or doing it well. And what's really funny, Tracy, I don't, you know, you and I don't know, don't know each other well, but what, what always blows my mind is the fact that I can specialize in, in female hormones and female metabolism blew my mind. And the idea that anyone wanted to hear that from me, I still believe women should be teaching it because mm -hmm. I've never had a period. I'll never go through menopause. There's just something about 
women teaching that. And I do think there's not enough women who specialize in that area. So I'll say one more thing and then see where else you want to go with this. But the other thing that that I would say looking at this is that um, absolutely the end sort of uh, message that I would have is that if you are a pioneer and if you have an idea of what you want to do, which it sounds like you do, then either direction you go, you're going to have to carve your own path. And then the next thing about that is I would I would ask yourself, if you had to have a fallback position, what would you be happier doing? Right. Would you be happier just being a physician, family medicine or whatever it is? And, you know, kind of doing that and doing some nutrition on the side or being a naturopathic doctor. I will tell you this, and this may be um, not something most people want to hear. Most naturopathic doctors I know are not making great money. Okay. Now, and it's not all about money. I know I can already tell that's not all about money for you either. But the fact remains that we don't get training in uh, business or anything like that in naturopathic medical school. I had to teach myself all of that. They don't in the med as medical doctors either, but there is a path to work. Right. You can always find a job as an MD. Right. As a naturopathic doctor, you kind of have to go into your own clinic and your own business and you don't get that training. And so that's a big piece of what I would be thinking about. If you had to have a fallback position, what would you most like to do? And would you rather be more of an entrepreneur and be figuring it out? Or would you rather have, you know, a job that you can kind of step into and fall back into? You know, you could always go work somewhere as an MD. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can always do that uh, as a naturopathic doctor. And the scope is wider as an MD and the legalities are more set in place, but also they do put a little bit more restrictions on you. Um, because you actually have the laws around that are actually looking at you. So you're far more likely to get hit by your board for doing things outside of your scope than believe it a naturopathic uh, doctor is because they're essentially always operating outside of their scope and there's not a, a real uh, infrastructure there to police them. Although I did just get a, a message from the California board that was t that just told me I can't uh, one of so a lot of what I do uh, programs that I are are marketed by other people, other websites. And some of those sites are marketing me as a physician. And technically, you can call yourself a physician if you have a Washington state license, but you can't if you have a California state license. Right. And so the California uh, State uh -huh. uh, Department friend of mine, actually, luckily, a friend <laughs> who it works there said, hey, Jade, you got to fix this. So there, there is an infrastructure there, but it's more with the MDs. So hopefully yeah. that makes sense. So does, does that bring up any questions for you? Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of it sort of echoes a lot of the friends that I have that I have that have taken the naturopathic route, and not one person that I have asked this question, hey, what's it like to be an ending? Not one person has ever said, I regret my education, not mm -hmm. one. But what they have said is, you know, uh, I have all the student loan and I, I can't make any money. Or man, it might be better for me to not be licensed as a naturopath, somebody in Canada actually, because mm. I don't have that large of scope of practice and I can't get hired at these certain places, even though um, I have more education than a dietitian. Mm. Um, I can't, because I'm not a dietitian, this organization that I wanna work with, they don't have it in their budget for a naturopath, they have it in their budget for a dietitian. So I think for anybody that is thinking about this as well, those are also things to consider that like, the infrastructure that you want to work in, does it fit a naturopath or are you going to have to sort of create your own way? And actually the first time I ever um, listened to an interview by you, Jader, that one that you were in, it was the Power Project with Mark Bell. Mm. Um, so I love, they, I just think they're hilarious and entertaining and I'm, I'm a gym <laughs> rat, are. so I just, yeah. um, I just laugh all the time and learn some things too, but um, you know, I, my background is liberal arts. I was very much into history, uh, very much into philosophy, psychology. Like I just, I mean, I ate that stuff up. So now I'm mm. having to do all of this back work and get all the sciences, which I, I love as well. Um, and so I'm going to like, so something, I don't know if this was your experience, but I, people have told me that, oh, Tracy, you just have too many interests. There's mm. too many things like you, you're just too distracted. You know, you you want to garden, you want to, you know, you want to go to the gym, you want to read this book. It's like I just got so many interests. And then here I am listening to this podcast. I'm like, this guy's like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100 percent. And actually, I'll say something about that. It's, I want to jump in real quick and tell you about one of my favorite 
new products. And to start out, I want to ask you a question. If you had to follow your friends around who are not the healthiest in the world and see what they are doing, what would be the number one thing you would probably tell them to do to start? For most people, that's going to be drinking more water, right? This is something that we talk about all the time in health and fitness. It's almost as if we think of it as an afterthought now because obviously water is so crucial. However, we oftentimes get this wrong. For example, did you know that when it comes to hydration, just drinking water can make things worse? Most people don't know this. Why? Partly because most people are over drinking water and under consuming the electrolytes that help water do its job. What we don't realize is that hydration is not just about water. It's about electrolytes, the minerals in there, as well as getting that water into the cells. And so you do not want to be over consuming water If you're not getting your electrolytes right, and this opens up a whole new discussion because most people are not getting their electrolytes right. For example, did you know that low sodium, too low sodium is an issue just as much, if not more so than high sodium? In other words, what we want if we're going to get the right electrolytes is to get the right amount of sodium and potassium and magnesium in the Goldilocks zone. We don't want too much. We don't want too little. We want it just right. This opens up a whole other thing here too, because people who are exercising, doing sauna therapies, doing low carb diets are disrupting and losing lots and lots of their electrolytes. For example, when insulin is not around and low carb diets, you will excrete lots of sodium. In other words, under that state, exercising, low-carb diets, all these things, you actually need more sodium. And so if you're somebody who has been just drinking water, not paying attention to electrolytes, and also feeling fatigued, feeling like you're underperforming, not sleeping right, getting cramps, twitches, headaches, any of these things, then you are probably dealing with an electrolyte issue. This is where the product element comes in. This product has been a game changer for me and many, many of my patients and clients. This is a rehydration electrolyte beverage, basically. It is a powder of electrolytes formulated with 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium without the added sugar and other nonsense that comes in beverages like Gatorade. This stuff is basically a rehydration beverage on steroids. It is the thing that is going to replenish your electrolytes in the right ratios, decrease fatigue, really correct chronic dehydration. And by the way, many people are dehydrating themselves, becoming hyponatremic, low sodium, when they're consuming too much water. You need your electrolytes on board, especially if you are someone who is losing lots of sodium and other electrolytes through low-carb diets, and lots and lots of exercise. This is where Element comes in. Element is a new sponsor to the Next Level Human podcast. I cannot recommend this product enough. I have been using this stuff for months now, and I have immediately seen changes in my energy levels. I feel like I'm operating on a whole other level, and I have seen this as being the primary thing that people who have been using Element have been telling me that their fatigue is getting better, especially fatigue that comes after very intense workouts that involve lots of sweating and lots of intense output from the nervous system. Please check out Element. Use the code next level. DrinkElement.com. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com drinkelement.com and let's get back to the show. So true. Um, You and I sound like we're very similar. Fitness person, nutrition person, and philosophy psychology geek. Um, In the beginning, when I started my business, and this is just a business lesson, I think, 
I niched at first. So the first business I did was a fitness business because I knew fitness was an easy sell. I also knew self-development sells, but it's a hard sell. Unless, you know, there's only a few people who, who can do it. Tony Robbins, you know, we know who their names, but there's not a lot of other people who have sort of broken through that. So from my perspective, um, the naturopathic realm allows you to do that better in my mind. But it as a if you don't understand business and I've crashed and burned. So one thing that I would say to people doesn't mean you're going to have my experience, but I do think the way to do it is you start one business, you make that work. You add on, you get that integrated, you add on. So for example, I started with fitness, a boot camp, and the whole concept of rest-based training, got in gyms, did all that. Then as I built up a following around that, I brought in the nutrition piece and the metabolism, weight loss, more weight loss where to piece. Now, just now, like over the last five years or so, I brought in my philosophy psychology piece. And um and just to kind of uh, give you an idea, by the way, of where I'm at. So right now I am crushing it career wise, money wise. But uh, the interesting thing about that, I did really well in my own businesses. It took me forever to figure it out. So I don't want to make it seem easy. And I almost went bankrupt a couple times. Um, I ended up figuring out, I ended up selling to a group of people um, who now we have become metabolic.com, which is a hundred million dollar company. Um, that's a lot of money. Uh, so I don't have to um, worry about that anymore. My education directly and my, my uh, craving for continuing education, both in business and in my field, I think led to that. And so I do think while you have a, a far, like the, the floor is way down there, the ceiling is also way up there. So I make double or triple the amount of money that um, most MDs would make. And I don't work but four hours, five hours a week. Now, most naturopaths are not in that particular situation. So you just have to take that with a grain of salt. And by the way, I don't know that that has much to do with me as much as it has to do with me being in the right place with the right, right people. Right. Yeah. And so but but I can tell you and a lot of people do say you seem like you've done really well. How did you do that? It is through mastering business in addition to having an expertise. And so that is the thing. If you're going to have varied interests like you do, I do think you have to go, OK, if I'm going to go the naturopathic route, get this education. Then if I were you, Tracy, what I would do if I could go back and I'd be starting a business right away. Right. right? And I'd probably start it in. um you know, on social media, teaching what I can teach, staying away from being very careful to look at when you're in school, they will be looking at you. You know, you can't be seen to be practicing medicine without a license. But as a personal trainer, right, which I was, you have some scope there. So I did operate teaching nutrition and, and teaching fitness under the certification of my of a personal trainer. And that protected me. And then I built that business. My first business, I had already had it already. I already started it and failed by the time I graduated from naturopathic medicine. Um, That's the way I would be thinking about that if you're going that route. Keep in mind, if you go the MD route, it's going to be, I think, tougher to do that because you're going to be in a position where you got to finish school. It it is the first two years, by the way, in both curriculums, you're not going to have time to do anything else. The next two years, though, uh, once you get into a clinic and then internships and residencies, you got a lot more flexibility in the naturopathic uh, sort of world. But just to reiterate that, I would just say, you know, for I would say what makes you really interesting to people is going to be your varied interests. The other thing is, is now think about my fallback positions. We were talking about fallback positions for you. Like I can fall back to be a naturopathic doctor, just move to California, open up a clinic. I could do that. Um, I also can just fall back to fitness and run a gym or something like that. I could, I write books, you know, and I'm starting to make money at those books. I could fall back to that position. So I can, I can do self-development. I can do fitness. I can do nutrition and natural medicine. Right. An MD, I don't know, has that many avenues. Now I have developed a real expertise in all of those areas. And I think the thing that um, I can already tell this about you as well, just the way that you are, uh, you know, talking to the people listening in on this conversation, you already are have an educator mindset Mm -hmm. just in the way you speak to people. I can already see it from that perspective. I go, oh, you're going to you're going to do really well as long as you plan it out. Right. Right. As long as you plan it out. So 
I think the naturopathic stuff would really work well for you. It's just, do you have the stomach for, and literally I mean the stomach for, um, the, uh, the amount of learning you have to do in the business realm. I mean, you get mm. your ass kicked. And, you know, part of me just goes, but I really want to do that again. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's worked out well, but I, would I really want to go through all that again? Well, it, it was I, will, rough. I will say uh, the, the great and terrible thing about being a professional beach volleyball player is you are your own business. You don't mm. you don't join a team. They're not paying you a contract. You have to hustle, not just to be able to compete and train, but you have to hustle for your business. You have to hustle to make money, um, you know, to find sponsorships, to differentiate yourself from the other athletes that are playing. Um, and so, and you have to think creatively and think, okay, like, yeah, sure, I could be the best player, you know, but I can't if I don't have a coach, if I don't have recovery and you're having to fund and, and do all of that. So I've learned a lot of hard lessons over the last 10 years about you know, betting on myself and saying, hey, I'm going to actually put my own money forward and believe in myself in this and see where it goes. Um, but as you were talking to and you were talking about sort of like a, a fallback, I don't know if that was the language you used, but, you know, sort of like a contingency plan or mm-hmm. um, I think that's a great point that you bring up. And I I think that in the past, I thought having like a contingency plan, especially as an athlete, right? It's a negative, right? Like why why am I distracting myself with a sort of debilitating thought where I'm, I'm allowing a seed of doubt to exist somewhere in my consciousness, mm-hmm. you know, instead of being like, okay, be rational about this. Uh, yeah, let's do everything you can to put all the, you know, all your eggs in this basket over here, but we need some eggs over here because life doesn't always work linearly, unfortunately. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think that now, um, obviously that's a wise perspective. And I think now I'm starting to understand that perspective of, um, you can do your best and life happens and be so be prepared. And it's yeah. not a negative thing if it didn't work out exactly how you saw it working out. Um, so yeah, I just thought wanted to reiterate your point there because uh, it's it's not a negative thing to have a contingency plan. No, and actually it's very, it, it's very stoic. You know, that premeditatio malorum is the saying, uh, meditate on the negative, which is not to say People get this wrong about the Stoics. It's not to say always think about the negative. It's it's basically we phrase it now, you know, um, hope for the best, expect the worst. In other words, plan for it. The other thing I'll say about that is one of the things that happened is um, I'm a visualizer and a manifester. So I had this very weird thing happen to me where I manifested and visualized Well, I visualized for years going up to New York City, sitting around this big round table with all these people at the publishing house watching and did it bidding on my book. And that visualization came true exactly. The only difference was the table was not round. It was this big, <laughs> this big table. But the interesting thing is I also had a visualization that I was going to have a New York Times bestseller, that it was going to make millions of dollars. None of that happened. And I went through, again, probably the second time in my life where I got as I've never been depressed, really, you know, because I, I know deeply what depression is, having worked with a lot of people with depression, but big disappointment in my life. The interesting thing about that, though, is that failure, what I thought as a failure, that obstacle. So that whole idea of obstacle is the way right. forced me to figure out Internet business, forced me to figure out uh, putting a program together and actually made me way more money and built way more of a business than that book would have at the time. And so I really like that you say that because I oftentimes think life works that way anyway. It'll send you in a direction, partly because you're pushing in that direction, but then it will kind of go, OK, and I don't mean that it's it's doing it for any reason. It's just life happens. But you have an opportunity to then work with that process. And if you have that mindset, um, I think regardless of what you do, you're going to be uh, very successful. I the way I looked at it is I go and I really did do this when when I was uh, I don't know your age, but when I was getting ready to start into um, uh, natural natural medicine, I went like this. I was like, Jade, what kind of life do you want to live? And I was like, well, I want to, I want complete time freedom. So right away that made me go, I doubt I'm ever going to be working in a clinic across one-on-one from people that had already set that seed. Cause I was like, well, I can't have complete time freedom right. if I'm, you know, beholden to a, someone else's schedule. That also meant really quickly that I was like, well, who do I know? Who have I ever met that has time freedom? Well, not anyone with a job. They were always business people. 
Mm-hmm. So those two things, when I got very clear on what did I want my life to look like, and that's how I focused on it. And it's what I would, my, the advice I'd give to anyone is go, what do you want your life to look like? Number one. Two, what are your passions and your interests? Right. Three, if you're someone like you and me, and it sounds like you are, and you are ready to, you're just like, you know, and you, know, you already have experience doing this, you know, being a professional in your sport and having to market yourself then, you know, that business and that ability to learn that stuff starts to make sense. And I think right. most people go through that anyway, um, or they just end up, you know, time for money. And being an MD is more time for money. It's better money. It's more stability and security. Being an ND is more your time because most all of them have to have a business and be in a clinic, but they do get to make their time. So you have to trade that. And me, I've always said, even though I do really well monetarily, I would live in a box and make nothing as long as I had freedom of time versus having millions and millions of dollars and having no freedom. And that, I was very clear on that you know, from the beginning. And so I think all of us who are, in, who are listening to the discussion right now should um, think about that um, and, and uh, you know, be in a position where you go... Uh, what do I want my life to look like? I think that's really important. Okay, so we lost uh, Tracy's internet went down, but luckily we exchanged numbers before we got on. So she just texted me her final uh, question and I'll cover some uh, details here. So her final question was, um, she says, okay, honestly, I think I'd be curious how you are now able to teach continuing education courses. How do you get verified to do that? Did you uh, have to submit your coursework to an organization for approval? Okay, so uh, one of the interesting things about this, as I discussed, is through my trajectory, I um, did not ever rest on the laurels of my education. Um, I knew what I wanted to do and, and, and it did emerge. So by the time I finished in clinic, I was like, okay, I want to do fitness. I will, I'm going to do uh, weight loss. And then most of my clients were women and most of the, my personal training clients through medical school were women. And so I started to focus on female metabolism in particular and got very good at it because I'm a research nerd and uh, I'm a conscientious practitioner and wanted to get results for uh, individuals. And so the first rule here is become a true expert in your field. And so one of the things I realized, by the way, and this is another sort of lesson of business is I realized that there weren't a lot of people who were experts in this space. There were plenty of people who were doing uh, weight loss, but it was mostly um, from the idea of like, then it was like the HCG diet or like, you know, this kind of stuff or uh, ap- appetite suppressants or, um, you know, um, metabolic stimulators and things like that. No one was really talking about hormones and their interaction uh, to impede or accelerate weight loss. And so my first book was on that. And all of, then I started teaching courses to the lay public. And then what happened was I started to get a name for myself in the naturopathic community and the functional medicine world because I was talking about things that not a lot of people were doing. And by the way, you might say, well, how did you get noticed? Well, my book was one, but I was also one of the first ones, I believe, online, Facebook, uh, talking about a lot of this stuff. And you're really doing the rounds, at least in the health and fitness space. And then I started to get invited to um, other organizations to speak. I started speaking at uh, Designs for Health events, Boulder Fest, uh, ACAM events, A4M events, um, uh, organizations like these. Uh, I speak more at these these organizations now. But I started to get invited uh, to do this work and got a lot of uh, people interested in that work. And then I decided, hey, I'm going to do certifications. And um, because once you get in and the easiest way to get to become a continuing education provider is just to be invited. I got invited. Then once I started getting invited, I was like, oh, well, I'll submit then um, my talks to these other continuing education providers because they're always looking for uh, people who are can provide education to their doctors and things like that. So I became a continuing education provider through these other organizations. Now, though, I have a certification, several certifications, one on female hormones, one on thyroid function. And I had a, a nutrition for weight loss certification back when I did the metabolic effect diet. And then you can go uh, or the metabolic effect business rather. And then you can essentially apply for continuing education uh, standing 
with any organizations that you want. And um, you can begin that way. And by the way, a lot of uh, people today are getting their education this way. As we all know, people are looking for other opportunities than just universities, partly because of the university business model doesn't always leave people with uh, the skill sets necessary to make the amount of money that they spent through their medical school education. And so a lot of people are looking at other avenues of getting the education. Uh, there's also personal trainers, physical therapists, chiropractors who don't get that education who want it, nutritionists who want it. And so that's how you begin to do that. It starts with this idea of developing expertise, then uh, start going into organizations. They will invite you. Um, this is where social media and all this stuff, I think, comes in. Just get out there and teach and submit your coursework to uh, current continuing education providers. They then essentially um, you know, establish you as someone. You start to gain credibility in that regard. Then you can start your own certifications as I did. And this is the way it works. And so sorry that we lost Tracy, but um, she was incredibly gracious to come on and ask her questions and facilitate this discussion. I wish I could tell you where to find Tracy online, but she doesn't have an online uh, profile right now. She decided she wanted to just eliminate, you know, sort of the Tracy Callahan professional sort of, uh, you know, professional athlete persona and is kind of not on social media right now. So hopefully we're going to see her in several years um, teaching and doing a lot of what uh, perhaps I'm doing or something uh, related in that field. Um, but thank you, Tracy, for uh, the conversation. And thank you, all of you, for listening. Um, the final thing I will say here is that I really like this format. So if any of you have uh, questions uh, in the realm of uh, weight loss, personal relationships, finance, business, and you want to have a discussion with me on the podcast, definitely send me a DM or send an email to support at jtita.com and my staff will look at that and maybe we can have a similar conversation to what Tracy and I had. Thanks so much for hanging out on the podcast today. Apologize for the technical difficulties of losing Tracy there toward the end, but I hope you got something out of this, especially those of you who have been asking the same question. All right, be good and I'll see you at the next show.